Now, a lot of students make the same common mistakes when dividing numbers, and that's okay. In this video, we're going to look at those mistakes, figure out why they happen, and of course, answer some of your questions from the comments in this very video. And guess what? We'll also show you how to fix them. Let's try a problem. 25 divided by 4. The most important thing we need to know is what's happening with these numbers. Well, 25 is the dividend. That's the number that comes before the division sign. And 4 is the divisor. It always comes after the division sign. So, which number goes inside and which one goes outside? It's the dividend that goes inside because it's the number we want to divide and the divisor goes outside because it's the number we're dividing by. All right, now that we know which number is in and which is out, here's the big question. How many times does 4 fit into 25? And remember, we always go digit by digit in the dividend if possible. Start dividing. How many times does 4 go into 2? Actually, it can't, because 4 is bigger than 2. So what do we do? Do we stop there? Is the problem broken? Nope. When this happens, when the digit is too poor to be divided, we just put a zero above its head in the quotient so everyone knows it's not rich. <laughs> then we look at the next digit and combine it with the one we already have. Now we're looking at 25. How many times does 4 fit into 25? Hmm, let's calculate. 6 times 4 equals 24, which is just under 25. So the answer is 6 times. We place the 6 in the quotient above the 5. Then we multiply. 6 times 4 equals 24. Now we subtract. 25 minus 24 equals 1. So, are we done? Yes, but there are a few things I want to point out. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. What do I do when there's a remainder? Do I stop or do I keep dividing? If you're only working with whole numbers, you stop once you've brought down every digit and what's left is smaller than the divisor. That leftover is called the remainder. Got it? This problem was quick just a few steps, but others can take longer. For example, 4,518 divided by 6. This involves repetition. Consider the divisor, 6, and the first digit, 4, of the dividend to see whether the divisor is contained in that first digit one or more times. If the first digit is too small, for example, six cannot fit into four even once, then we look at the first two digits of the dividend. Here, that makes 45. Now we ask, how many sixes are contained in 45? Let's make a guess. If we guess eight, we can check by multiplying six times eight equals 48. But 48 is greater than 45, Oops. so that guess was too big. If we guess 6, 6 times 6 equals 36, that's less than 45, so it fits, but it's not the closest. Hmm. The best fit is 7, because 6 times 7 equals 42, which is the closest we can get without going over. So, we write the 7 in the quotient above the 5. Because we skipped the first digit and combined it with the next, we could, if we want, put a 0 above that first digit so we don't get confused. Now, write 42 under 45 and subtract, giving us 3. Bring down the next digit in the dividend, the 1, and place it beside the 3 to make 31. Some of you might be wondering, why do we bring down the next digit? And how do I know when to do it? Here's the rule. You bring down the next digit whenever the number you're working with is too small for the divisor.
For example, in the problem 4518 divided by 6, after the first step, you might be left with 3. Since 3 is smaller than 6, you bring down the next digit, in this case, the 1 to make 31. This lets you keep dividing until you've used up every digit of the dividend. Now we ask, how many times does 6 fit into 31? The answer is 5. Because 6 times 5 equals 30, which is the closest we can get without going over. So, we write the 5 in the quotient above the 1 in the dividend. Then we multiply. 6 times 5 equals 30. Subtract 31 minus 30 equals 1. Next, bring down the 8 from the dividend and place it beside the 1 to make 18. 6 goes into 18 exactly 3 times. Write the 3 in the quotient above the 8 in the dividend. Multiply. 6 times 3 equals 18. Subtract. 18 minus 18 leaves 0. So, how do I know when I'm done with the problem? You're done when? You've brought down every digit of the dividend and the remainder is smaller than the divisor. At that point, you've fully divided. Nice work, everyone. You made it through another division problem. And always remember, stay curious and stay pink.